debate. My friend, I hesitate to use that word because what do you call someone you've only ever really known over the internet and not that well? That's kind of awkward, but um, okay, I I consider her, her, her a friend, I guess. But my friend Laura, Laura Lee, uh, died a few days ago, a couple of days ago. She was a whore. She was a prostitute. She was a mother. She was an activist. She was a human rights campaigner and an activist for sex worker rights. So when I call her a whore and a prostitute, I'm just being descriptive. I'm not insulting her. That was what she did. She was a, a dominatrix for the most part. Not my bag, <laughs> but whatever floats your boat. Um, and we were friends. So I guess we're both part of a very loose group of people who care about censorship and sexual expression and things because we've all been thrust into it in in one manner or another. Laura, I think, because she was outed and it was very painful and difficult for her to see, especially the way other women turned on her. So I got to know her through her activist work and through messages of support. I mean, I'm not out there in the way she was. I just, you know, write, write to my MPs and write blogs and make videos like this in my own small way, trying to contribute how I can. But Laura was on the front lines, you know. She was giving testimony to committees. She was writing newspaper articles. She was out on the street making speeches and so on and now she's died suddenly we don't know why yet the family's asked for privacy and, and so on and she was a couple of years younger than me so that's a that's a bit of a shock but while i came to know laura through her activism we mostly talked when we talked about her pets and her daughter cat who she loved more than anything um, the difficulties that she had dealing with the the pressure and so on and she was always massively supportive to me but the best thing I could do for her I think in my small way and I doubt she particularly <laughs> would, would have remembered who I was was just to treat her like a human being now I know quite a lot of people who sex workers or work in adult industries and so on you know and all I do is write things and maybe commission art that's maybe got a booby in it but somehow I still feel part of that that same community that anti-censorship pro-individual rights community that we that we all belong to and yet she always made me feel welcome made me feel like I was contributing through my discussions and arguments and everything that I did, however small and insignificant it was. And so I came to regard her as a, as a friend. And she's gone. And these things come together, don't they, at the, at the same time. So at the same time that my friend Laura, the whore, is dead, someone is using a comedian, a female comedian, I won't give her name, so I don't want people to go and harass her, she's probably got enough of that already, but a female comedian in, in the US uses his association with prostitutes to attack Trump, putting prostitutes in the same bracket as porn stars who also shouldn't be treated like that in the same bracket as wife beaters and, and so on using that as an angle to attack him you know look how sleazy this guy is that's not on you can't put prostitutes and porn stars in the same category as wife beaters as though it's 
some indication of anything. You know, they, they get paid to do a job. They are who they are. They are people. Like like the rest of us. They're not a tool for you to use to, to beat this orange balloon animal down. And it just betrays how things have shifted, how this stigma has shifted from coming from the evangelical right to coming from the so-called progressive left. Say so you are not allowed to make that choice. You are not allowed to, to sell your body. At least not in this particular way that we don't like. It's harmful to women, even though there's no evidence of that. It's dangerous to kids, which it isn't. It's not fair, is it? And even something so innocent as, as grid girls or walk-on girls, you know, that's that's too much. So what chance does fucking for money have? You know, the, the new porn laws that are coming in uh, in the UK, which, which concerned Laura as, as well, the, the censorship there, you know, that has international implications because What's going to happen to mixed platforms like like Twitter, where you can have a conversation or you can look at porn? Are they going to have to conform to this age verification process as well? Everything's under threat, and it's coming from both sides of the old political aisle. Both the right and left have these authoritarian streaks where they will listen to panic, where they will listen to populism and they will, through that, cause stigma to be applied to people like Laura, who was a brilliant and wonderful human being. And all the while they think they're doing something good for people. I think now, more than ever, is the time for people who, who agree with people like me, who agree with people like Laura, to, to stand up finally, despite the stigma, despite how people will react and say, no, you know, I, I stand up for these people's rights. I want what they do to be safe. I want it to be consensual. But I want them to be free to live their life as they want to. That shouldn't be such a such a big ask. And I want people who are doing nothing that should be illegal to be able to live off what they do. Sex workers, porn stars, cam girls, directors, producers of this kind of stuff, um, pornographers, if you will, strippers. These are some of the best people I know for all their flaws, because everyone's human. Because they live lives that force you to cut through the bullshit and confront the world honestly. And they, it breeds a kind of, of toughness and strength that I admire and can only aspire to. And Laura was that kind, that kind of person. And she will be sorely missed, and I hope her example will continue to inspire many, many more people to stand up and be counted in these ongoing and seemingly never-ending battles against misrepresentation and censorship and stigma that comes from all sides. So I hope you will, moving forward, join with me in doing everything you can to destigmatize and support and protest in favor of sex workers, adult workers, against censorship, against stigma. And hopefully between us, we can start to shift this puritanical zeitgeist that made so much of Laura's life difficult. Zang. And peace.